Good morning again, brothers and sisters in Christ. It's still Monday, and it's now nearly 10.15, and I want to read you the email for the day from Dawn. And it starts off by um, with the, the Trumpet by Bill Burns. Give, and it will be given to you in ways that you will not expect, in ways that are beyond your imagination. I will bring the goodness of the Lord into your life because you have become a giver. Give as I lead and direct. Give and do the things I ask you to do. Give yourself to prayer when I call you to pray. Give yourself to people when I call you to help. Give yourself to me and my kingdom and serve me with a willing heart. And because you have a willing heart, multiplied blessings are coming to you in this season. Boy, if you all only knew, that is like so 1,000% true for me. Oh, God is good. Oh, Call from. excuse me. Okay, I'm just going to continue and we'll we will edit that out. Okay. Now this part is Small Straws in the Soft Wind by Marsha Burns. Your life experience contains many moving parts. The doors will open to present opportunities to accomplish what has been beyond your scope of imagination. These are things that you cannot foresee or predict, but you can prepare and position yourself spiritually by faith. To prog progress, to progress, to progress when the time is right. Let I me mean, wait a minute. These are things that you cannot foresee or predict, but you can prepare and position yourself spiritually by faith to progress when the time is right, says the Lord. Okay, I'm not sure I'm saying that right, but I hope you get it. Mark 1, 3b says, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. Okay. Um, December, wait a minute. There's another one. You, this is one sentence from Doug Addison. It says, you will get a huge reward and blessing if you stick with it and don't give up as things are coming together. Okay? That's the word he got today. Right. The first part was Small Straws in a Soft Wind by Marsha Burns. I'm a little discombobulated this morning, y'all forgive me. Trying to take care of too many things. Okay, December 17th of 2017. Write these words that I say unto thee, son. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. There is no other God before my holy throne. My children, the time of your redemption is upon you. Many of you have been washed white as snow before me. It is I working in you that has done this. It is you I am coming for. The ones that have yet to surrender to my will will keep going. You will have to fight another day. My love for all of you 
is much more than any of you can even comprehend. It has always been my wish that all would come to me in full repentance. You hear that? People who think you don't have to repent? Jesus says it has always been my wish that all would come to me in full repentance. But what must be, will be. I am a just God. I am a holy God. And there is none like me. Many of you will come to know my truth. Many of you will see the error of your ways and salvation and redemption awaits you. There is life after this life eternal. Choose to live it with me in my kingdom. My kingdom awaits. Yahushua. Matthew 5.16 Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and may glorify your Father who is in the heavens. And that was given to Jordan Christopher. On with the next one. December 18th, 2017. There is some doubt, but you may be able to catch it before it takes root. Don't let the doubt take over. Let it pass right on by. Let it pass right through you. It won't have enough time to take root. Yes, doubt comes. I will always come if get wait a minute, it will always come if given a chance. But you can head it off. You have to take the time. But you can stop it in its tracks. Yes, you can do this. Boy howdy, I can attest to this. Doubt has been coming to me and I just say I choose to believe you Lord I trust you Lord I believe you you are not a man that you would lie and it leaves so don't let it take root in you the verse that she gives is Mark 11 23 and 24 from the ESV Truly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. And that was put up by Bev Robinson. Another one, December 18th, 2017. I am calling you to come up to the high places with me. I have made you to come up ever higher. Rise up to a greater perspective than the troubling and cumbersome situations around you. Too often you fall prey to the snares and traps your enemy sets for you. From a higher viewpoint, you will be able to distinguish more clearly the obstacles beneath you. Let me establish and position your stance for, a, for standing strong. Let me establish and position your stance for standing strong. The verse given is Psalm 18, 33. From the NLT. He makes me as sure footed as a deer, enabling me to stand on mountain heights. And that was put up by Kevin Robinson. All right, there's one more December 18th, 2017. Step out of the past and come into the now. Your future will be stymied, 
as long as you are living out of what happened before. Even the good in your past can keep you from progressing. Change is inevitable. Your present and future will depend on your forward progress. Put one foot in front of the other and step into your destiny, leaving your past behind. Your future is bright and filled with promise. Step into it. Psalm 37:23 in the NLT says, The steps of a man are established by the Lord, and he delights in his way. And this was put up or given to Robin Robinson Bolin. And that is the end of today's encouraging words and scriptures. From in the email from Dawn. Thank you, Heavenly Father and Lord Jesus Christ and your sweet Holy Spirit for giving us words of encouragement to stay ready, to get ready, and to continue to believe and not doubt. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us. And enabling us to have the ways to pass it on and share each other's words and dreams or visions. I thank you so much. I praise your holy name. And I worship you and I glorify you. In Jesus' precious and holy name I pray, amen and amen. With that I say, I plead the blood of Jesus over this video and the internet connection. And over each and every one of you and all of your devices that you use to connect with us, fellowship with us, and learn from whatever the Lord gives us. And I will talk to you again later. All right, bye for now. If you have not yet accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, let me just try to impress upon your heart that if you will just realize all the things that are happening around the world, whether I've just now spoken of them or told of something else, you must realize that we are in the last days and I would just like to tell you what it takes to be saved it's so simple really it takes faith it does take belief the Word of God says in Ephesians chapter 2 for it is by grace that we are saved through faith and not of ourselves it is a gift of God not of works lest any man should boast so if you've been doing a lot of good works, you know, helping people, giving to maybe a church you've been going to, you've been tithing, which the churches press upon people, and you've been serving in this or that area of your church, those are works, okay? Now, having no amount of good works will get you into heaven. You have to admit you're a sinner. When you come to the realization, I am a sinner in need of salvation, you admit it. You believe, once you get the belief that Jesus Christ did die for you, he shed all his blood on the cross for you, as well as for me and everybody else. And once you understand that, and believe it you say oh Lord forgive me I am a sinner in need of salvation I repent of my sins and that means you turn away you fully plan at that moment to commit and turn away 
from your sins. You ask Jesus then, please let your Holy Spirit come into my heart so that I can become better, learn of you, be bold and courageous, and trust fully in you. I'm going to need a lot of help, Jesus. You're calling out for him. You're putting your trust in him. You're recognizing him as your Lord and your Savior. You can do all this in your own wording. You don't have to say it in any specific order. It's just the realization that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, and he wants you in heaven. You're admitting you're a sinner. You're confessing your sins. You're believing that his death on the cross and subsequent resurrection from the dead was done for you so that you could have the free gift of salvation. Now, you've turned from your sins. You've told him, I'm going to turn from my sins, Jesus, and not do them anymore. Will you? You might. We all sin. The word of God says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Jesus did tell us in his words, be ye therefore perfect, even as your heavenly father is perfect. But he knew we were going to slip up every day, even after we started loving him and following him. The word of God also says, pick up your cross daily and follow me. We must constantly be found putting our flesh to death, giving up all things that are wrong. And that requires reading the word of God so you'll know overeating, things that are uh, over, and overindulging in any substance. Of course, illegal ones are totally out of the question. Oh, I could go on. I could make a 30-minute video just telling you how to live from here on out. But you know what? That's what the Word of God is for and the Holy Spirit in your heart. Let Him convict you of what you need to stop doing or cut back on, okay? You could be over-exercising, believe it or not, and killing your body. Our bodies, the Word of God says... For know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? So we're not supposed to do anything to harm our bodies, okay? That's part of living right. And love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. Call upon him first. When you're sick, when you're hurting, when you're lonely, you're depressed, you put him first. Pray for his help and then go to the secular means, doctors, therapists, whatever, if you still need to. Don't put your trust in any man that stands behind a pulpit. There are some good churches, but there are far more where you go in there, you're going to learn something wrong. Like, well, I don't want to get into it. I mean for this to stay short for those who need to be saved once you've made that commitment and you've asked Jesus into your heart you will be saved okay now pick up your cross and follow him start by reading the Bible in the book of John it's the fourth gospel the fourth chapter in the New Testament it is the book of love start there if you have any further questions you want to talk more, you can email me at Jeannie Hardesty, all one word, lowercase, at gmail.com. God bless you, and I will talk to you later.